Russia is seizing on this controversy in Canada's parliament, saying it's outrageous. A Ukrainian veteran who fought for a Nazi unit was presented as a hero in the House of Commons. Here's a Kremlin spokesperson speaking earlier. House Speaker Anthony Rota says he alone is to blame for Yaroslav Hunka's invitation to Parliament and that neither the government nor the Ukrainian delegation were made aware of Hunka's presence in the gallery beforehand. Larissa Galadza served as Canada's ambassador to Ukraine from 2019 until 2023. She's in Victoria, British Columbia. Ms. Galadza, it's good to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, I need to start with what happened here in Ottawa on Friday. Uh, President Zelensky's visit really being overshadowed by the invitation of this guest who fought on the German side in the Second World War. I, I wonder, given your time as the country's ambassador to Ukraine, how do you think this moment is going to go over with Ukrainians and with their government? I'm, I hate that it happened. I'm deeply embarrassed that it happened. Um, but the Speaker has spoken, the Prime Minister has spoken, and, uh, and I think, um, you know, we, we, we will need, need to move on from this uh, each in, in our own way. Uh, for Ukrainians, um, you know, they're, they're used to challenges, they're used to new hurdles, uh, they will, uh, but they're fighting a major war, uh, and they will be focused on that. Um, um, for, for Canadians, we need to learn, um, and uh, everyone needs to do the right thing. Russia is seizing on this, right? This has handed them a, a, a ready-made piece of propaganda. How effective do you think this can be in terms of helping Vladimir Putin in his messaging war? I don't think it'll be effective at all. Um, I think that uh, uh, the world is increasingly understanding that uh, Vladimir Putin is is not uh, a, a credible uh, messenger, and um, and I, I don't think that this will help convince anyone uh, that his uh, that, that that he is on the right side of history. What kind of diplomatic conversations do you think are happening right now in Kyiv, though, between the, the Canadian mission there and the Ukrainian government to try to sort of smooth a lot of this over? It, it feels like if you were still in your old job, uh, you would have had a very difficult weekend. I think the conversations uh, that are happening there are how to leverage the visit that happened and the discussions that took place with uh, the Prime Minister, with the members of the Ukrainian Canadian community, with members of the business community, and uh, and take that energy that was there um, in all of the rest of the events and uh, and, and channel them into uh, into the future and understand how that significant package of assistance that was provided uh, that was announced. Uh, uh, is going to be flowing. Does this uh, embarrassment, as you call it, I mean, does does this in any way make that harder? You know, uh, you, they want, this seemed like some, such a triumphant moment on Friday and then clearly obviously was tarnished by the revelations over the weekend. So does it make it that much harder to, to leverage that or do you think people can move past it? I think that it uh, it was an excellent visit. Uh, President Zelensky had been waiting a very long time to come to Canada, and you see the warmth between Prime Minister Trudeau and, and President Zelensky. Uh, I, I know that he took energy away from that, and that is a, a huge gift to a president that is uh, every day giving every ounce of his energy, everything that he has, to, uh, to fighting this war, to booing his own population, to rallying the world for the cause of Ukraine. Uh, and I think that he came away uh, with a lot of that. I, I wonder if we could just dig into uh, what, what appears to be a regional challenge with Poland uh, being upset with Ukraine and bilateral Ukrainian-Polish relations being uh, strained. There's an issue or dispute over grain and now Poland talking about not sending new weapons to Ukraine. Uh, I, I mean, what's, what's your sense of that flashpoint, that tension between those two countries and how significant that could be? My sense is that there is nothing easy or facile or simplistic in international relations. Ukrainians and Poles have a deep, deep relationship. Um, and uh, and I know from having been on the inside, having been in Ukraine, when these flashpoints flare up with Poland or anyone else, that, um, that it's never as it appears uh, in the news. There's always something more, uh, more sophisticated, more intricate, uh, more elaborate, uh, 
uh, more nuanced, let's say, uh, and, uh, and, and it's not as simplistic as, as the headlines might make it look. But uh, I, I wonder... That's the interesting you, part of diplomacy. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> well, I, and you, you would know that well, I mean, from your four years there. But I just wonder uh, on that. I mean, Warsaw was resolute in its support of Ukraine, really becoming a leading NATO member in, in terms of military aid. Are, are you worried that's in jeopardy uh, with, it, with this conflict? And we've seen the Polish ambassador um, this weekend saying Ottawa needs to apologize for what happened in Parliament on Friday. Uh, how do you think all of this plays in to, 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 to the relationships in that region? Um, I think Poland is very concerned about the war, the war that Russia is waging in Ukraine, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, Russia is Poland's neighbor as well. Uh, and so I think that uh, Poland is going to remain resolute in its support for Ukraine uh, uh, and, and a strong NATO ally. And, uh, and I, 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 I think that that will be strong moving forward. So you were assigned as ambassador to Ukraine for four years. We're 19 months into the war now. Where do you think the country is in, in terms of its conflict when you left from, from when, uh, to, to come back to Canada, uh, from when this conflict started 19 months ago? Um, it's a war. Uh, it was Russia's illegal and unjustifiable invasion. Um, and uh, it was met with incredible, um, uh, in, incredible uh, strength, uh, incredible creativity on the part of Ukrainians, and incredible unity on the part of Ukraine's uh, partners. Uh, where we are today is, uh, as you say, 19 months on. I think it's mm -hmm. uh, you know, nearly 600 days. Uh, uh, Ukrainians are proving themselves they continue to be creative they continue to be resolute uh, they continue to be absolutely uh, uh, determined to win because they have no option but they're also tired uh, 19 months of war everyone knows someone who has died the funerals are constant the the cemeteries are, are overflowing young intelligent bright the future of the country uh, is, is is being sent to the front lines and so many of them are dying Ukrainians are very aware of the long-term impact of this war, not just the economic part or the, the physical part, but of the mental part as well. Uh, and uh, and they, 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 have, they are expressing to me, my friends, my uh, former colleagues, um, that they're tired, but they have no choice. They have to keep going. And this is why a visit like President Zelensky's to Canada, with all that strong support and that love and that, that bond that we have is so important to Ukrainians, because I know from having been there that they feel that support from far away. And uh, and that's why I think it's so important when Prime Minister Trudeau says, we're standing with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Um, they need that now more than ever. You touched on something there that I was wondering about uh, out, out loud on, on Friday when, when President Zelensky was speaking about children being taken by Russia, for example, and the 175,000 Ukrainians who are here in Canada and countless others in, in other parts of the world and young men predominantly being sent to the front lines. The capacity of Ukraine to rebuild once there's a peace, if they get a victory, with the loss of so much, many young people either to, they've had to flee, they've had to fight, they've died or they've been taken. What does that look like, you know, for a Ukraine in the future that has to put the pieces back together once the fighting is done? Ukraine, I don't think they're going to wait. Ukrainians aren't waiting until the fighting is done to try to put the pieces back together. And so they're, they are, they're living, they're building. Even the, the, the political and institutional and legal reforms um, that were underway uh, b before the invasion, um, those continue. Um, the, the, the economic uh, development, entrepreneurs continue to open businesses. Uh, you saw President Zelensky talking to Canadian business. They continue to look for investment in, in the country. So I think Ukrainians are, are settling into the idea that they need to do both uh, at the same time and, uh, and as it's possible to do. Uh, the war is present in different ways in different parts of the country. It is present all over the country and no part of the country is, uh, is, is out of the reach of, of Russian uh, missiles. Uh, but, uh, but they are doing both. They are living and they're fighting for, uh, for their lives at the same time. Larissa and they're going to do it with creativity, with that determination. Right. Uh, Larissa Gladsa, former Canadian ambassador to Ukraine, thanks so much for your time today.